Hello everyone, this is Anton, and can you guess where we're headed? This is going to be a 360 video, a little bit more relaxing than usual, where I'm going to do very little talking. Take a guess, where are we? If you've guessed Saturn, you guessed incorrectly. Welcome to Jupiter. And just to commemorate the Juno mission that arrived to Jupiter on July 4th, 2016, we're going to explore the system in 360 and take a look at some of its more prominent satellites. The first on our list is Europa. This is actually the smallest of four Galilean satellites and the sixth largest moon in the solar system. Just like the four Galilean satellites that we're going to be looking at uh, in this video, this was discovered by Galileo Galilei in 1610 when he was using his homemade telescope. In terms of size, this moon is a little bit smaller than our moon and is very likely to be made up of, uh, mostly on the surface at least, water ice, but inside it might actually have some sort of an iron nickel core and very likely even a liquid water uh, ocean that we're really hoping to discover one day. And for all we know, we might even discover some sort of water extraterrestrial life, at least this is what we're hoping to find. The largest moon in the solar system is right here, and this is Ganymede. This is also the only known moon to actually have a magnetosphere, which is kind of important for life. This particular moon is also about two times as massive as our own moon and is actually even larger in size than Mercury, the closest planet to, our, uh, to the Sun. Third largest moon in the solar system is Callisto, and this right here is just slightly smaller than Mercury, but is obviously larger than our own moon that we have orbiting around Earth. Interestingly, the surface of this moon is considered to be the oldest and one of the most heavily cratered, if not the most heavily cratered in the solar system. In other words, uh, the surface here has experienced quite a lot of different collisions. And just like Europa and similarly to Ganymede, we think that maybe underneath all of this ice there might be some sort of a liquid ocean that might even harbor life. And the closest moon to Jupiter is Io. This is actually the driest known object in the solar system and it has over 400 active volcanoes which are basically even right now spewing out quite a lot of sulfur, sulfur dioxide, various other compounds and are even responsible for essentially changing the shape of magnetosphere of Jupiter itself because many of these elements actually turn into plasma that then starts orbiting Jupiter itself in the orbit similar to one of Io. But one of the reasons that we'll probably never be visiting this particular moon is because uh, it is actually one of the most radioactive places in the solar system for us to stand on. There's quite a lot of ionizing radiation here every day and a human being would probably not survive for longer than a day or two. This red potato right here is Amalthea. 
a beautiful red-ish moon of Jupiter, which is very likely consistent of some sort of water ice and is probably very porous as well. And interestingly, this particular object is also responsible for one of the rings of Jupiter that was actually produced by some of the stuff that gets thrown off Amalthea regularly and as it's being ejected, it sort of creates a ring around Jupiter. And the last moon we're going to take a look at is Thebe. And similar to Malthea, this particular object is made up of some sort of porous water ice with some other materials on the inside, but also unusually large craters and also high mountains, which sort of indicate that this object probably collided with something else in its past. But interestingly, this object is actually spinning relatively fast as it orbits around uh, Jupiter. And because of that, if you were to stand on the equator, the actual escape velocity at that point is actually very, very low since it's spinning fast enough to counteract the effects of gravity. So with powerful enough legs, you could actually jump strongly enough to escape from this moon and start orbiting around Jupiter yourself. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. I just wanted to explore Jupiter in 360 and give you a chance to kind of look at some of these objects in Space Engine. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you'll subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone else you think might want to watch this in 360 and take a look at Jupiter as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. Bye bye.